So last time we talked about the content creator Deaf Noodles, he was unironically calling an openly gay YouTuber Rich Lux a member of the alt-right. And now he's unironically calling ex-TikToker Papa Gut, who was known for calling out pedophilia on the platform, a pedophile. Honestly, I don't know if I should be surprised or not at this point, but regardless, it got a lot of people talking about Deaf Noodles to the point where he's now trending on Twitter. The most likely motive for Deaf Noodles' aggression against Papa Gut ties back to a long conversation he had with with him about five months ago, which when he uploaded it to his channel, was met with a lot of backlash from Deaf Noodles fans, to the point where he added a long-winded five-minute apology to his next video as a result. I want to apologize for everyone who had to see that. Uh, I want to apologize to Papa Gut for uh, treating him that way. Um, the name calling as well. I want to apologize for that as well. Um, and... I appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting. Yeah, I know a lot of you are upset with me, and that is totally understandable. Uh, whether or not you choose to accept this apology, I absolutely understand it. I wish I could take it back. I really can't. You guys got to see me uh, basically do or uh, have like a massive L, and uh, that is, uh, that's it. I'm going to have to live with that. Despite this incident happening months ago, Def Noodle still acts very defensive whenever it's brought up against him on Twitter. But now with that context out of the way, let me show you the conversation leading up to Def Noodles calling Papa Gut a pedophile. A user called Robbie Rotten tells Def Noodles that he didn't address a Twitter situation, to which The Last Wish responds to him by saying, We all know the only bitches Def gets are the people acting like one in his audience. Grand Theft then responds to him by saying, Why are you following him? laughing my ass off to which Robbie responds because I actually liked him in his content but now he's just awful can barely stand him now unsubbed from his YouTube just there Grand Theft then responds sure Jan to which Robbie responds also after his debate with Papa Gut just lost all hope for him Grand Theft responds I don't get why he debates these fucking weirdos makes him look like a douche Robbie then responds I wouldn't say Papa Gut's a weirdo the guy's quite straightforward with what he talks about and is quite rational was clear what Def's intentions were in that debate after seeing his tweets the other day there actually does make him a douchebag grand theft responds by saying did you not see the video Papa Guy made? If she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough for me. Robbie responds by saying, Yeah, he's talked about it plenty of times, and has said himself it was disgusting and edgy and cringy. He's grown a lot since then, whereas Def seems to be getting more bitter and childish. Pretty sure he's fat shaming just now with the Michelin Man tweets. Grand Theft responds, I'm not comparing the two. If any grown ass man makes a joke about impregnating a teenager, it needs to be locked up. That's a feeling he's been dealing with for some time, it seems. Robbie responds by saying, I don't think any Anyone should be locked up for a joke, even if it is poor taste. Grand Theft responds, joke, right. To which Robbie replies, what are you trying to say? Danica then responds, I think they are just saying it takes a certain type of person to joke about fucking a kid. Robbie responds, and what is that certain type of person? Do tell. Danica responds, someone who thinks about fucking kids. To which Robbie then adds Papa Gut and asks, this person is saying you think about fucking kids. Is that true? Papa Gut then replies, the joke was, if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed. Thank you very much, Andreas Lopez, for the advice. It was a satirical call out since he allegedly slept with a 14 year old. It's a joke I've condemned multiple times, but that person isn't interested in honesty. Def Noodles then quote tweets Papa Gut's explanation by saying, Motherfucker got famous on TikTok for joking about fucking 14 year old girls, then gets offended someone jokes about him. But you know, he's right. I shouldn't have said that. I should have instead says he makes himself so small in his videos to hide the fact that he looks like a pedophile. He then shows four unflattering photos of Papa Gut and then continues the Twitter thread by adding the FBI Los Angeles account and saying, Put this motherfucker on a watch list. He looks mad suspicious. Repsion reacts to this by saying, Holy shit, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Luigi says, You can delete this, you know. Holly says, Still mad about that debate you lost to him? Morgan says, Common Def Noodles L. A and Y says, L plus ratio Def Noodles W Papa Gut. Tar says, I've been watching your shows for about two years now because they were one of the most sensible drama channels. I don't know if it is the pressure of it all or that you have always secretly been this way, but you 100% lost me. Welcome to the platform, Keemstar 2.0. Young Crip says, You are fucking yourself harder than the pretend kids are getting fucked. Leia Something says, So it's okay for you to call people pedos, but the second somebody calls you one, you get to sue them. Which, by the way, she's actually referring to a real lawsuit that Def Noodles made against Keemstar for doing the exact same thing that Def Noodles just did to Papa Gut. Optimus responds to Def Noodles by saying, Isn't part of your whole shtick being so openly against
against someone joking about someone else being a pedophile. It's almost like you literally are fucking suing Keemstar for doing exactly what you were doing right now. Let me guess. More of your shitty comedy routine? This guy's the weirdest dude in the community for sure. The biggest hypocrite of anyone here as well. I don't think I've ever seen Deaf Noodles involved in one positive situation surrounding his name. For someone who loses so often, I admire his tenacity to keep taking L's like a champ. Let's not even mention the fact that he's fucking irrelevant laughing my ass off. Dude has 150k followers and can't muster 100 likes on a tweet to save his life. I don't know who he's even trying to act morally righteous to anymore. Repzilla responds to Deaf Noodles by saying, okay, Deaf Noodles is a terrible person. I feel confident in saying that. I reframe from inputting my opinion because I personally don't like him, but after he slandered Papa Gut, I want my viewers to know he's trash. Nicholas Diorio says, laughing my fucking ass off. Oh no, he's lost it. Tipster says, wow, Deaf Noodles has really lost the plot. Papa Gut himself then responds to this by saying, thank you Deaf Noodles for quote tweeting my full and honest explanation as to the joke that I've condemned multiple times that was meant to call out alleged predatory behavior as you attempt to slander me. It's additionally interesting that we talked about this in a live conversation so you already know the full context, or you should if you were actually listening. The reality is I've put my platform on the line to de-platform multiple predatory content creators, while you intentionally misrepresent situations constantly to sensationalize a story. Using false pedophilia accusations to try and de-platform someone is absolutely disgusting and invalidating to actual abuse and molestation survivors, but it's clear you don't actually care about that. Wavy Websurf responds by saying, this guy is pathetic. Papa Gut then makes a YouTube reaction to this, titled, Deaf Noodles is a bad person, posts it on his Twitter and captions it by saying, I decided to put up my response to the situation from my live stream. It gets raw and emotional towards the end, which is embarrassing for me, but I feel the need to put it out. Dennis, I hope you get everything you deserve in your life. I will leave the full link in the description to this video, but for those of you who are not interested in watching the whole thing, here are some of the most important bits from the video. The reality is, is that like, this isn't going to go the way Dennis wants. I'm not going to have an emotionally provoked response. This is what virtue signaling about pedophilia looks like. Dennis doesn't care about kids getting raped. He's a worthless human being that doesn't actually care. I've put my platform on the line multiple times to call shit like this out. I lost one of my TikToks one time with like 600,000 views because I called out Zoe Laverne. This is just what Dennis does. And I know it, it's to get me to have an emotional response here. But like, realistically speaking, I'm not going to take the bait. You're trying to misinterpret me as a pedophile. But I've done a lot to deplatform actual predators. 20-something year olds trying to fuck 13-year-olds and rape them. That's who I've deplatformed. 27-year-olds trying to get uh, introduced into meetups, sending their dick to 13 and 14-year-olds. That's what I deal with. What do you do every day? What have you done with your platform? I've constantly called out predatory content creators. It's a big part of my content. And then I also educate young men on rape culture. That's what I do, Def. What do you do? When we first talked, I gave you a tremendous amount of charitability, but it's gone now. The reality is, is you're worthless. You're a worthless content creator. You don't do anything positive. You are a drama news reporter, and that's totally fine. But don't come into my fucking space because you don't have the intellect to be able to talk about these things. You don't have the intellect, the humility. You don't have anything. This is a space that I've come into, and it's very difficult to have conversations and educate people on very necessary social issues, especially as somebody somebody who is a man. I educate young men on not putting young women into situations where they'll take advantage of them, creating, because this is how this happens. These, these power dynamics are so subtle and a lot of young men are assaulting women without even like realizing it. And it's these really nuanced things. And this is what I'm doing. I'm educating a whole a group of young men on being good young men. What the fuck are you doing? You're trying to deplatform me. Why? Because I upset you. I hurt your feelings. Why? Because you know that what, at the end of the day, I'm the direct fucking person to point to for the your deplatforming as a fucking content creator because you fucked with me but i understand he's not a fucking rapist a pedophile and a predator but that's what he was being called and you don't care because you don't care if kids get fucking raped dennis you don't give a shit you've never talked to somebody who's been raped you never talked to anybody who actually this deeply fucking hurts like have you ever been in a situation where you sat down and you'd looked a fucking survivor in the eye and you listened to them tell their, their fucking story have you ever heard this have you ever sat down and listened to this in a situation where there's nothing you can do but listen, when the only thing you want to do is have an, a, 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 is an angry, emotional response that's going to have a profoundly negative impact on that person who's just trying to tell you their story. They're focusing on you, and you get to the situation where you get so upset and so worked up, you make it about you. What the fuck do you do, Dennis? What the fuck do you do? What the fuck do you do every day? You want to come on here and play false fucking rape accusations?
Have you ever talked to somebody who talks about how they were fucking raped as a child? What do you do every day? Because if you fucking did, you wouldn't play this shit. This shit is fucking serious, Dennis. This isn't a game to me, Dennis. This is, this is real to me, Dennis. This, is, this fucks me up every single time that I've engaged in, in talking about some kind of a sexual assault. Or I listen to somebody tell me about their sexual assault. Or I deep, try to deplatform a content creator about these horrible fucking things that they do. Do you know what I do, Dennis? Do you know what I've been doing for the past two years every time I deal with this, Dennis? I chain smoke and I eat like garbage. And it's not an excuse to do it. But like I was a little healthier before this. I don't like to tell people this because who the fuck am I? These people are telling me their real stories and I'm complaining about getting stressed from hearing them or trying to de-platform people. It's not even close to the amount of stress that they deal with, but that's how, that's the impact it has on me. So I don't talk about it because it's stupid and it's unfair to those people because they shouldn't have to feel guilt for me getting upset, listening to their stories and trying to do something about it because I'm not, I'm not hurting in any way even close to them. All right, so that's what Papa Gut had to say on the situation. Going back over to Twitter, Adam McIntyre says, Def Noodles is truly one of the worst people ever. Genuinely. Cat Tenbar's response to him by saying, A few days ago he falsely claimed, I implied someone was a pedophile. And I just went to check his profile, and now he's outright falsely claiming people are pedophiles. Which is also what he's suing over for happening to him? Def Noodles quote tweets her and says, This person is an actual member of the media, who just a few days ago, implied Addison Ray's dad was a pedophile. And is is now saying that someone looks like a pedophile is equivalent to accusing them of that. This is why mainstream media is dead. Willie Mac Show responds to him by saying, You implied that Papa Gut wasn't joking by using quotation marks around the word joking. You did not just say he looks like a pedophile. Jordan Henry says, I was such a fan and I'm really upset by all of this. Dennis, you need a break and some good sleep please. Lisa T responds by saying, I'm sitting with the same feeling. What is going on? Fame got to his head? He's seriously acting like Logan Paul anno 2017 these days. Shrek 2 Stan says, bro, isn't this the same thing you were suing Keemstar for? To which the last witch responds, it is, and he just lost his case. Cat Tenbarge responds to death by saying, I sincerely hope you seek help and log off. Nicholas responds by saying, Cat, listen, this is an extremely base take. However, I quite like him like this. He should stay logged on. Bigger crater where his success used to be laughing my fucking ass off. Def Noodles then continues to tweet about this when he says, me tells a joke, them, and then shows the image from Papa Gut's video where he's wiping his eyes. Def Noodles then quotes his friend that said, these sensitive thugs gotta get off the internet. Young Crip responds to Def Noodles with this Twitter video. So, um, have you guys been hearing about this, uh, Def Noodles character? Yeah, he fucks kids. <laughs> Tap's response to Def Noodles by saying, Hey, Dennis, buddy, how goes the therapy after the damage Keemstar has done to you? If I were your therapist, I would have laughed at you until you left my office. I'm so quirky response to Def Noodles by saying, You, I'm a comedian. The world. Helmet Chuck says, If we are going with that logic, Keemstar makes pedo joke tweet about noodles. Def Noodles. Susan bitches to his therapist about him. Emma Townsend says, Stop trolling the guy. This is ridiculous now. American Mama responds by saying, Pedophilia isn't a joke. Neither tagging the FBI. Def Noodles is legit dead to me. Terps TV says, Jesus Christ, dog. You need to learn when to stop. Adam McIntyre says, You never have been and will never be a comedian, friend. Repzilla says, Hey, calling people sensitive about having sexual abuse weaponized against them by you is pretty fucked up. Seeing how that is a subject rightfully sensitive to a lot of people, without you having to make it any worse. The Quartering says, I forgot this guy was still around until I saw him trending. I am 100% not surprised why. Timmy responds to him by saying, Keemstar tells a joke, Def Noodles, and then shows the court filing that Dennis made against Keem. Def Noodles then tweets out, Breaking news that will most definitely change your life. Def Noodles is trending and no one knows why. Adam McIntyre responds to him by saying, Def spent most of his career hyper-focused on Trisha Paytas that he became her. Mudahar says, Brother, it's because false pedo statements aren't the only you think it is. Also, it's a great way to get sued. Canadian whatever responds to him by saying, no one knows why. Try introspecting. Nathan responds to him by saying, 
No offense, but I have never heard of you before. I thought it was some food brand trending. Ask Juice responds by saying, I'm only here because Mudahar is ratioing them. Repzion says, Hi, I'm Deaf Noodles, and I like calling folks pedos when I'm criticized. I hope you get banned again. Nicholas Diorio responds to Deaf Noodles by saying, It's because everyone hates you. The commentary guys hate you. The journos hate you. H3 subreddit hates you. Papa Gut hates you. When is the last time you've seen H3 fans, Keemstar, me, Cat 10 version Adam McIntyre, Repsion, and Papa Gut agree? Never. Sir Man Sir responds to Nick by saying, Deaf Noodles was what we needed to bring the internet together again. Nick replies by saying, He is a bipartisan issue. Keemstar quote tweets Nick and says, no comment, pending lawsuit. Augie RFC tweets out a picture of Deaf Noodle's social blade statistics and captions it by saying, breaking news that will most definitely change your life. Dennis, the child menace, Fatosa, aka Deaf Noodles, has fallen below 150k followers after vicious attacks against fellow streamer Papa Gut, most known for verbally castrating Dennis in a debate earlier this year. Kavos says, Deaf Noodles just self-imploding is a beautiful slash familiar sight, but instead of crying about me, he's making false pedo statements. Nicholas Diorio says, Guys, snap out of it. It was just a dream. Look, Papa Gut and Deaf Noodles are on good terms, guys. They agree that pedo jacking is bad. See, guys? I think that weaponizing sexual assault, weaponizing pedophilia, weaponizing any form of abuse is extremely fucked up. So the clip Nick just showed there was actually from the debate Papa Gut and Deaf Noodles had a couple months ago that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And as Papa Gut mentioned earlier, in that same debate they also talked about the inappropriate old enough to bleed joke that Papa Gut made on his TikTok. And since there's no other convenient place to put it in the video, I'd like to show you the clip of them talking about it right here. Because not only has Dennis already talked about this joke with Papa Gut before, but he actually defends it. Take a look at this. If there's a habit of people misinterpreting your comedy, maybe you're not that funny. Hold on, hold on. You can't just make a blanket fucking statement like that. You could say that about any fucking comedian, that they're hiding behind their fucking jokes. That's some straight up fucking bullshit. Yeah, I could say that you you have a video, for example, where you say that if she bleeds, she's ready to bleed. I would, or I would love to talk about both of these. Okay, wait, can, hold, hold on. Can we talk about both of these? Are you telling me that you're hiding, you're actually a pedophile and you're just hiding behind a joke? Is can that we, what you're telling me? Can we talk about that, since you're gonna apply that circumstance to me, that Wait. I'm hiding behind folks. Yes. I know people fucking meme this all the fucking time. Honestly, I don't give a flying fuck. But yeah. I am an actual working comic. Like I've written for television shows. I've actually been paid to write That's sketches. Great. Just the fact that you threw that out there, it just doesn't stand on its own. Okay. Especially when, when I mean, your own jokes. It would. It, what would that say about you? What it's okay. but no, but the problem with what you're saying is that I'm already like acknowledging that even though if I even if I had positive intentions, my actions were wrong. So let me talk about both of those jokes. So first of all, the old enough to bleed, old enough to breed video. So what do you want? So wait, so what do you want me to do? No, I get it. So what? Do you, well, I, I, I just want to talk about these two things, things you brought up. I, I don't want you to steamroll over me all talking right. about these two. Th the full joke yeah. that I made was if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed. Thank you very much, Andre Lopez, for the advice. So Andre Lopez at the time was a 23-year-old TikToker with like 20 million fans. I know what Andre is. I actually broke that story, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, which, yeah, which story is that? 18-year-old girl, the, the one with the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I would that so like regardless of my intention was to call that out. I would use humor to call stuff out, but it missed because people misinterpret it. It's an inappropriate joke regardless. I mean, what's the context? That's the thing that we come keep coming back to. Humor is all about context. I, I know, context? I know, but I, I but like you threw out the old enough to bleed, old enough to breed thing. I'm just like explaining know, well, the take on it. It's still it's still inappropriate because of the sphere that I was in, and like people were very sensitive to pedophile jokes, which makes perfect sense. And so like now I'm more sensitive to making like that joke. And I'm gonna stop because I am worried about the way that my in what i'm saying it's is interpreted explain something to you i know At but it's not just all sometimes it's about the way that people receive information and like we need to make no, sure we not. speak about it in the right louis yes it is K, louis ck did a seven minute bit on snl where okay. he talks about a pedophile in his neighborhood offering okay. him mcdonald's and him getting in his car and getting but, I, but we're not on snl and so like it wasn't appropriate for no, me to make that joke on tiktok context that's the whole thing in my show people know that they're clicking on a comedy show it's been a comedy show since it's Fucking are inception. You, I wait, okay. So are you I saying that like you agree with my original take of the old enough to believe? I, I mean, it's not a joke that I would make. Okay, so honestly. I think it was inappropriate. And that's what I'm trying to make. It, the context got lost, but it's still an inappropriate joke. And like, I think that that's fair. Is, do people know you as that person who does those kinds but of no, jokes? But the thing is, is that we're, we are, when we make content, not only the people who know you consume your content. So like people who know me 
when I comes down to like takes that I make, they'll I understand. I had that happen no. where jokes were decontextualized, and right, and that's what I'm, that's all I'm trying to say is that we're not we're not, we're near a comedy club. The context is very much there. It's a, but like when you're in these platforms, it's different. All right, so now that I've shown you that, let's continue taking a look at the Twitter fights because yes, there's even more. The hate against Steph Noodles on Twitter resurges when he makes this video announcement with the caption announcing roast battles coming second half of August 2022. See this space, this is my office here in Los Angeles. And there's going to be a performance space in it. And what we're gonna do in two weeks is we're going to start having roast battles. So everybody talking shit right now on the internet, I invite you to come to my office to say it to my face. Pay the $15 to get through the door, and welcome to the roast battle, baby. Let's see if you can survive the heat, bitch. Augie responds to him by saying, like this comment if you're on drugs right now, to which Mimology responds, stoned as fuck. Kavos responds to him by saying, let's see if you can survive the heat, bitch, showing a screenshot of the video that Def Noodles made titled, Kavos made me want to quit YouTube. Edwin responds to Def by saying, I do not remember Def Noodles being this unhinged. He is inviting his haters to his office for a roast battle for a $15 fee? LOL? Tipster says, this guy has lost his fucking mind lol optimus says i'm not giving 15 dollars to annihilate you if you were being honest a creator your size offering 15 dollars to annihilate you is kind of pathetic money must be tight these days i'll formally invite you on stream to do that though don't duck me deffy boy deaf noodles then quote tweets him and says it's easy to have twitter fingers you can say whatever you want behind a screen but in person in front of a room full of people looking at you under the bright lights let's see if you are as tough as you pretend to be on the internet i won't charge you just pull up up. Hell, I'll pay for his flight and stay in LA if he's from out of state. If he ignores this tweet or says he can't make it for some reason, then you know the answer. He's a bitch. Willie Mac Show responds to him by saying, It's weird how you want people to show up to your mom's house to roast you on stage while your friends watch. Do you want us to fuck your girlfriend too? This sounds like cuck fetish, and I will not help you get off. Jaden responds to Def Noodles by saying, Nobody wants to fly out to wherever the fuck you live and roast you when everyone can do it online for free. Def Noodles quote tweets them and says, This is the typical excuse cowards deploy to avoid being confronted for saying reckless shit. Don't throw a stone and hide your hand. If you were going to speak reckless, then say it to my my face. Also, I'm offering to pay his expenses, so I'm essentially offering him a free vacation. By the way, the roast will be broadcast live on my social media. I got the office space that I currently have with the purpose of broadcasting shows and events, so this is just the beginning. Def Noodles then continues to promote his roast battle when he tweets out, Pull up Optimus to the roast battle. I will pay for your ticket and stay in Los Angeles if you are from out of state. If you can't make the date, let me know another date. We are doing roast battles every two weeks, so I'm sure we can squeeze you in. Don't be a bitch. You then shows this promotional art that says, first YouTuber roast battle, pull up or shut up. Friday, August 19th, 2022, Los Angeles, California. Tickets available soon. Optimus then responds to Def Noodles in this Twitter video. Usually I don't do this, but this is easier and more efficient than making a thread of tweets that no one honestly wants to read considering the person it's about is Def Noodles, infamous for being a Twitter punching bag and YouTube laughing stock. This man invited me to his show to roast him live. He even waived the $15 entry fee, guys. Oh boy, lucky me. And he said he'd even pay for my flight and stay. He then also called me a bitch, which is heavily ironic. There's a lot of problems with this statement, Dennis. First and foremost, I'm going to decline your offer to come roast you in person. Why would anyone pay you $15 or do it for free come see you to do something that everyone in the community already does for free? I'm already providing the content you want on Twitter.com. I know you don't make any money from it because, well, it's not on your platform, but I, I guess that sucks for you. But I just want to let you know, you're not undercutting the competition, you're just pathetically whoring yourself out for the same price as a fast food combo meal. But I wouldn't expect anything less from someone of your status because your entire legacy online is basically you getting absolutely curb stomped by anyone who interacts with you. Which, conveniently enough, completely sucks for you because everything in your life of value solely exists online, and it's slipping away, isn't it, Dennis? It's a hard knock life, I guess. Sorry for hitting the mic there. But if I was down bad enough to lower my standards to a $15 entry fee, it wouldn't be hard whatsoever to torch you. Why don't I accept your offer? Because you can't get anyone interested. There's no money to be made with you. There's no progress to be made. Nothing. It's essentially punching down on the kid that everyone in class already punches down on. You call me a bitch for not handing you free content to try to recover your falling statistics with, yet you're the grown fucking man wearing kitty cat ear headphones 
headphones for 11 year old children to gawk at when they half digest your content that coincidentally they probably stumbled on from one of the many times you've gotten bullied by everybody. Not only that, but you got so ass mad that Keemstar joked about you being a pedophile that you launched a lawsuit against him you'll most likely lose, which is probably why you're whoring yourself out for $15. You might have had more luck starting up the OnlyFans there, Dennis. But if that's not enough to go ahead and get you off my case here, remember the time that Kavos literally made you fucking cry and you're calling me a bitch? Just come on, man. Just come on my stream. We'll handle this. I'll split the ad revenue with you 50-50. I'll do all the promotion for it because God forbid you do the fucking promotion for it. 500 people might show up. And that money that I give you will go right into your tip jar for paying Keemstar back for his legal expenses fund. Ironically, comedian Def Noodles didn't get that joke. Actually, speaking of your comedy, yet another reason I won't be showing up to perform on your show. Nobody shows up. I just took a See, I got boy problems. <laughs> Ironically, you said that there'd be a room full of people or whatever to see me, but knowing that it's you I'm supposedly going up against, I really doubt that's the fucking case. While you continue to get completely bombed by the entire community for your shitty antics all day, what little audience that cared about you is fading away. Even more proof of what I'm saying, your tweet calling me out couldn't even muster up 20 fucking likes in an hour. You have more followers than me, you cannot get engagement. You are actually bad at your fucking job. You're not interesting, you're not funny, you're not worth really anyone's time. Your announcement tweet adding me in it for attention with date and tickets information didn't even get 10 likes. Who the fuck would ever show up to this and give you their time? So to wrap this up, Death Noodles, Quit trying, quit being a pussy, quit trying to fly people across the country to bully you. Let it happen online, let more people see it than what'll ever show up to any of your pathetic fucking shows. And just take it like a man, dude. Just take it like a man. Learn your place and stay there. Optimus follows up his Twitter video by saying, In 45 seconds, a video roasting this man got more engagement than his promotional tweet about this calling me out. Laughing my ass off! If that doesn't tell you where the eyes are, and where the revenue in this situation is, then I don't know what will. New content tomorrow, moving on. Def Noodles responds to Optimus' video by saying, TLDR, this motherfucker talks a lot of shit on the internet, but can't back it up in real life. So he posts a three minute video coping. Any YouTuber with over 250k followers, who actually has balls, I'll pay for your flight to LA and hotel to do the roast battle on August 19th. Pull up or shut up. Hey Lay then responds to Def Noodles by saying, you should really take a break, dude. To which he responds, not gonna happen. I get tremendous fulfillment from my work. I do not depend on outside validation for it to be fulfilling. So the negativity doesn't bother me. You don't know me. You just watch my videos. Stop telling me how to live my life. If you don't like me, then why follow? People replying to this are fucking weird, man. I'm literally in bed petting my dogs after meditating. You don't know me. Stop projecting your own emotions onto written statements I'm publishing. Stay mad, lol. 99% have never had a conversation with me to know. Get a life. Loki reviews response to him by saying, Dennis, people are just worried about you because of all the things that happened in such a short time these past few days. That's all. They just care about you. Deaf Noodles responds, Nah, don't worry about me. Worry about the grown ass man who cried on his live stream because I made a joke. I'm surrounded by people 24 7. We are all laughing at this shit because everyone looks out of their minds. I'm still me. I've always been me. People who know me know that. Def Noodles then goes on to address the situation on his YouTube in a video titled, My Apology to Twitter. Here is what he says With the giddiness of uh, having my Twitter back, it appears I have stepped on the proverbial banana peel and fallen face flat on the ground. As a result, many, many people on Twitter are very disappointed at me. The bird app is not very happy with me right now. In fact, it pooped on my head. And though a bird pooping on your head is often a sign of good luck, in Brazil at least, in my case, it appears to have sealed my fate. So I find myself standing here once again by myself at 3.33 in the morning on July 28th, one month, seven days after the solstice, I'll say all of you that is very heavy, pain, trouble, and bleeding heart. I say, I'm going to ask you to words are coming out of my mouth. I am very, very, extremely, profoundly, unequivocally, with no brief, or perhaps upsetting guessing, but also being impatient. Maybe I should be performing this. Anyway, the guy, Dennis Joseph, the host of the show, the early news, on the Channel, which was established in 2018 in Los Angeles, California, which is a state in the United States of America, which is located on planet Earth, which is the third rock circling around the sun in the Milky Way galaxy. Me, I, him, he, him, those are my pronouns, Dennis. I am very profoundly sorry. You don't mean that. Yep. This is bad boy for life. Irrelevant news. 
So the reaction to that response was less than positive, with the dislikes on this video outnumbering the number of likes, and his comment section just eviscerating him, most of which are actually fans that have actually turned on Deaf Noodles due to his recent antics, rather than people who already hated him prior. Deaf Noodles then continues to live in La La Land when he tweets out, BREAKING NEWS THAT WILL MOST DEFINITELY CHANGE YOUR LIFE! Deaf Noodles trending for the second day in a row, but no one knows why. How haters think I react to them? crying. How I actually react to them laughing. Me breathes. Twitter cries. And then he also changed his profile picture to have sunglasses and added bad boy to his banner. He's continuing to post weird defensive shit like responding to people saying that he got money from his rich dad by denying it and saying that he has Alzheimer's. His timeline's getting really weird and repetitive at this point. It's basically just a pile of cope. So I'll just end off the video by reading this one last tweet from him. He says, I want to thank all the drama channels for making videos sensationalizing my jokes. I've been trying to pivot away from drama for the last seven months, and you are all doing me a favor. The more drama seekers leave my pages, the less I have to cater to them. So please, keep it coming. Even though all of his tweets from the past three days are literally directly addressing the people he's claiming to pivot away from. And at least to me, when I look at his channel, it doesn't seem like he's pivoted away from drama at all. I mean, just look at these titles. But to answer his tweet, I guess you're welcome. Anyways, I'm sure this will continue on into the future, so if you'd like to see me cover more of eventual meltdowns from Deaf Noodles in the future, be sure to let me know by leaving a like on this video and subscribing with notifications on so you don't miss it. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.